everyone, as most of you know, I'm from Shenzhen. But my ancestral home, the home of my parents, is Foshan. Foshan is the home of Bruce Lee, Yip Man, and many of China's most famous Kung Fu fighters. So first thing people ask me is, do I know Chinese Kung Fu? No, some of the men in my family practice, but I never took an interest. But like all Chinese, I was always fascinated by the stories, same as Western kids read stories about cowboys or knights in armor. The second question people ask me, is Kung Fu real? Yes, Kung Fu is just the mastery of any skill through extreme repetition and focus. You can see that all over China, from bank tellers to noodle makers. We Chinese have amazing Kung Fu. But what people really mean? Is Kung Fu any good for fighting? Well, some of it once was. Look at it this way. In 1928, if you were competing in the Olympics in high jump, you might use a technique like the scissor drum to get over the bar. But by 1968, it was completely obsolete and something called the Fousbury flop was used. And if you use the 40-year-old scissor technique, then you will lose. I love cowboy movies and stories, but probably the sort of old-style gun handling they did then wouldn't be a good idea now. Same with Chinese Kung Fu. What actually works has been integrated into Santa and other modern martial arts. What doesn't is still beautiful art and history that I hope people appreciate. But here's the thing, what if modern fighting could be practiced in the way we practice other kinds of Kung Fu, like that bill con counting and noodle making? How formidable would that be? What if there were more skills and techniques that fighters could practice in a scientific way thousands of times, but without hurting themselves or their training partners? Now, this is all a little silly because I don't actually know anything about fighting. I can't even throw a punch. But I thought it would be fun to make a project that might give people who do know something about fighting some ideas for better tools. So. I'm looking at the problem as scientifically as I can. Here's my hypothesis. The primary goal of striking in MMA is for one athlete to do the most brain injury to the other athlete. If we only measure drills of kinetic energy applied to the human brain during the course of a three mini round, that number alone does not directly correlate to the amount of brain damage done. Neither force or celebration numbers alone can predict or optimize brain damage. The most tissue damage for the least energy transfer is a combination of these two along curve. We have pretty good data on what that curve is, what type of force causes the most brain damage from decades of car crash studies and studies of athletes getting concussions. Many ethnics now have sensors built into their helmets to tell coaches when they've received the type of impacts that will cause brain injury. We are going to build our own version of that sensor, but in reverse, so that ethnics can learn to strike along a force and acceleration curve. That is more likely to do brain injury, but with less wasted energy. We are getting that curve from something called HIC or Head Injury Criteria. HIC is a simple mathematical formula that measures the likelihood of head injury arising from an impact. It's a fairly straightforward bit of math that we can run on a small microcontroller with an accelerometer. That part is pretty simple. The tricky bit is how to make it usable. I think phones and apps in martial arts dreams are probably a bad fit. Those kind of things are always fussy and hard to connect, probably hard to use with gloves on. I just want a very simple, durable tool like our traditional wooden dummy for the fighter that just does one thing well. So having defined the problem and how I wanted to solve it, I could spec the project to my engineer friends to figure out the details. 
It's a small PCB from JLC PCB, of course. It's been through their new PCB service, so I don't even have to solder anything. It just comes with all the parts soldered on, ready to go just like this. Bad for DIY videos, but pretty cool if you want to sell them, right? Here in the front, uh, it's a small display to show the HIC number and a small rechargeable LiPo battery. The big problem is how to protect it. One punch or kit will smash it to bits. So what I'm going to do is 3D print an enclosure in soft TPU and then cast the board in transparent epoxy resin. Hopefully that will be strong enough. Let's give it a shot. So I plug in the wires onto the board. Right now, I want to put the battery on top of the board, kind of like this, to prevent it from flopping around. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue in the middle of the board. And then gently press it for a couple of seconds. I've got this uh, soft TPU uh, enclosure that I 3D printed. I'm going to pot it the, this. I'm going to put the board in and then show you how I pot it. I have a special trick for doing that, but I'll show you that later. First, I'm going to put just to adjust the um, precision of the board. I'm going to put it in the middle here. like this. Okay, I've got this potting compound. I am going to mix it and put it into the mold. So I've set my Creality CP01 printed bed to 40 degrees. I think that should help cure the potting compounds. And now I'm go just going to pour it in. Okay, I've made a few of them and this is one of the better ones. So I'm going to test with it. I know you must be wondering how it's going to work in a block of epoxy. Well, there is a rich wrist switch inside and I'm going to show you. So now it's on and if I want to turn it off, I just use the same motion. Okay, let's test it. Okay, now that you've all have a good laugh at my expense, what have we learned? 
Well, I can say there is a very distinctive feel to a punch that lands with a high HIC score. Even having no clue how to punch and only throwing a few punches, I started to get a good feel for how to punch to make that number higher to do more brain damage, at least in theory. I think it's safe to say you can use a device like this to train a specific force curve. That doesn't mean that's actually useful. I have no idea. That's something for athletes and coaches to figure out. I think how useful the HIC sensor will be depends a lot on what it's mounted to. I would like to see some fighters play around with putting it on different bags and hand targets that approximate the weight and resistance of a human head. My dummy is close to a human head, that's why I got it. But I don't know if it feels right, because well, I don't know how a knockout punch feels. Also, that little OLED display, the decimal point has got to go. A simple two-digit number is fine. I don't know what I was thinking. Is this a finished product? No, of course not. But less than $25 in parts, it's not bad for a working prototype, even if the whole thing is completely ridiculous and I have no clue what I'm talking about. And let's face it, I have no clue. We've still learned something important. If you have a hypothesis about sports that you would like to test, you can easily and cheaply make a small durable standalone hardware device to test it. An epoxy padded PCB from JLC PCB in a TPU holder is a great combination and something I'm sure to use in other projects. How about you? What do you think of this project? Should I send it out for testing? Should I pursue and refine it? Or is it impractical and unnecessary? If you wanted to, how would you improve or change the HIC sensor while still keeping it a simple single function training tool? Let me know in the comment section. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.